They come into today's match as favourites, and with their amazing record in the division, they are riding high. No, no, I'm not talking about NIP. In the next duel, the favourites are certainly Ints. Yes, Ints. In their BR6, there have been two matches between Ints and Ninjas so far, and both times, VNX, Vitz and company were victorious. In the first stage, they won by 7-4. In the second, victory by an even larger score. 7 to 2 on Inter's most comfortable map. É, contra a Nip a gente pegou um mapa que a gente tava com, a gente tem muito conforto que é a nossa vila. É, os outros times respeitam bastante, banem bastante contra a gente. Inclusive, se eu não me engano, foi o único mapa que a gente perdeu no, no Brasileirão. Mas creio que a gente conseguiu arrumar esse nosso mapa aí e todo o contexto do nosso time para a gente chegar forte e melhor do que a última vez. And it's good that Mitty and his men have put their house in order. After all, Inter do not mess around when their opponents are in IP. Proof of this is that Vitz is always keeping an eye on the ninja's captain. A Nip é um time que eu particularmente eu tenho muito respeito, é um time que eu me espelho bastante. É o Psycho Gel deles, eu, eu assisto muito coisa, muito conteúdo dele, e eu acho que por isso que a gente consegue ter resultados contra eles, porque eu, eu me espelho bastante nele e eu consigo ter uma leitura sobre ele. So Psycho and his teammates better watch out, because today's game may not mean anything to either side, since NIP is qualified for the Elite Six Cup and Ints are safe from relegation. But the truth is that the ninjas will surely not want to fall here and knock their confidence before going into the championship. Creio que eles têm, são um time bem passivo, né? E a gente sente impor o nosso estilo de jogo, não deixar eles executarem a play deles, fica muito fácil jogar contra eles. Eu acho que vai ser um jogo muito pegado, vai depender muito do pick ban e como que a gente vai estar se sentindo em game, mas eu eu acredito que a gente consegue sair com a vitória. Will we have another victory for Ints? Or NIP finally manage to upset them? This is what you can find out now as this confrontation between Ints and NIP gets underway. So, it feels like tonight we've had a lot of storylines and a lot of impressive games, but this one, Ollie, there isn't too much on the line for either teams. They both know where they're going to be going. We both know that, obviously, Ints are going down to the Copa do Brasil, and in NIP are going to the, uh, into the Copa Elite Six. Sorry, it slipped my mind for a second then. So, we, we know where these teams are ending up. There's not too much on the line, but I think it's still just going to be a solid game of Siege where people are able to try out new things. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, let's be honest, NIP haven't had the best season so far, so there's a chance here for Ince to get a result or at least a couple of rounds against them. Um, you know, if this was the NIP that we saw in Stage 2, we'd be sat here going, you know, this one could be a quick one. But with the way that NIP have played so far this stage, things really aren't going their way all the time. Uh, and I think that that's maybe demonstrated here in, in where we're going to end up and stuff. It's not going to be necessarily, um, you know, one of those maps where people really want to give everything away. But likewise, NIP, they're going to want to try and build a bit of confidence as they move into the Copa Elite Six. You don't want to be going in cold. Demo's been sort of harking on about this all evening, and it's a really important point, is that you need to be hitting your form at the right time. NIP, we've touted them multiple times as a tournament team. This is the time for them really to start hitting the stride, ramping things up, so that they can go in nice and confident to next weekend's games. Well, that's a big part of it, isn't it, Demo? How will NIP go into this? Will they be trying something new or will they just go for their standard strategy of Siege and not really try anything new and save that for the Copa Elite Six? I guess a, a big hint on that, though, is going to be which map we end up on. So let's take a look over at the Vetoes and see where we're going to be playing. NIP, this is, this is their chance to really shut up a lot of the critics. NIP have been under a barrage of heat at the moment with with how their current form has been. It's it's not the same team that we've seen at Invitational. The team that then went to Mexico didn't prove anything to us, got knocked out at groups, have came into this competition, haven't looked the strongest, has lost, you know, they've lost the big rivals, they've lost the teams that maybe they shouldn't, they've struggled, you know, they've had a lot of overtime games. And this is their chance now to come in here and just show us what they're all about and just absolutely dumpster their competition. We're well, going to Oregon. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one here on Oregon, I think, Ollie, because it is one of those maps that it forces teams to play a little bit slower, even with that more aggressive meta that we have going on at the moment. Do you think that Nip are able to adjust that play style now against a team like Ints? Because it feels like Ints are one of those teams that at times can be a little bit unpredictable with how how they decide to speed their gameplay. 
Yeah, quite possibly. Ints aren't always the easiest team to read. And I mean, part of that is because you just really don't know what to expect from them. And as time's gone on, teams have had a better understanding of how to read NIPs. One of the sort of touted reasons for them not doing so well of late is that a lot of teams are really focusing quite heavily on how to counter this adaptive play style that they like to bring. Now, it's NIP that have made the decision there whether we go to Clubhouse or whether we end up on an Oregon. And it's kind of interesting that those are the last two maps that are available as well, given that we've seen NIP have some fantastic clubhouses back in Stage 2. We've not really seen them play it in Stage 3. We've seen them play Oregon a couple of times, but again, I think these guys are trying to keep things under wraps. They don't want to be giving too much away because they know that there's a lot of eyeballs on them, right? Every team that aspires to, to be an invitational winning team or to be a world championship side they're going to be looking at these guys and they're going to be like what are these guys doing that i can take into my own gameplay and we saw a bit of that in the video at the start of the sh of this pre-game where we saw in saying you know I, I like to watch nip i like to you know try and emulate a little bit of that play style because it is so successful when they've got a lot of eyeballs on them they do need to be careful about where they're going they need to be careful about what they're, what they're giving up and what they're showing and i think that that's probably reflected quite nicely there in the bands that we're seeing yeah i think it's going to be an interesting one isn't it demo because right now with the way that nip are looking if they're able to win this game they're going to jump all the way up and tie in third with team one so it would be a big advantage to them whereas w7m the same comp sorry not w7m uh who is it? int that's it i it slipped my mind for a second you love Ints them so much you love w7m so much <laughs> Shouts. you can't stop thinking about them welcome I mean, to my side welcome. performance earlier can you blame me no nope, you know? i cannot but, I mean, Ints right now, look, they're currently out of the teams that we know are going to the Copa do Brazil. They are looking really good. They're at the top. Being able to stretch that lead even more, grab themselves a couple more points, it's got to be a big confidence boost that they really need, especially after the stage that they've had. Yeah, I think Ints going into this have had a, a bit of a mixed bag, uh, certainly. They've had some really high points. You think if their win against Liquid was, was massive for them, they took a win against Santos also. But they haven't really had a win in quite some time. I think it's been, what, three matches in a row that they've lost. Um, lost 7-1 to Team 1. Absolutely uh, pummeled. Then they moved on to Fury. Again, got pummeled. Went on to Faze. An okay performance, but still got beaten nonetheless. It's, I feel, are kind of due for a win. And like Oli has said about, you know, NIP in their current, current form, they are ripe for the picking right now. Yeah, it's, it's very up in the air, I think, in terms of how things could go. Because, I mean, for a lot of people, NIP have to be the clear favourites. But, you know, we've mentioned it so many times, Ollie. They've had a rocky season. And you have to almost think, as much as it would be a confidence boost for them to win this match going into the Copa Elite Six, what happens if they lose? Well, it begs another question, doesn't it? You know, you look at NIP and you think about some of the players that, we, that we're expecting something significant out of. These guys dominate a lot of stat lines, but not really for the right reasons, honestly. Psycho, we've spoken about him a lot. I don't know what has happened to Psycho. I don't know how he manages to find himself as the opening death, but he is currently the opening death leader in the entirety of the BR6. He's negative 15, which is enormous. I think the next closest to him is going to be Zach negative 7. So Zach, of course, playing for Int. Psycho's beaten him by double in that stat line. It's not a great one to be good at. You look over toward the ratings. There's no one really rated significantly highly on the side of NIP. The best performing player that they've had this season or this stage, to say, so far has been Julio. He's the, currently the highest rated player. He's got the most positive KD, and even that's only plus seven. So really, nobody standing head and shoulders above the rest. It's been a very lackluster stage from NIP. You flick over to Ints, it's a very similar story. But it's a little bit more expected with Ints. We weren't expecting them to come and set the world on fire quite the same way that we would NIP. And that's what makes this quite a nice game because they're at a very level point inside of the standings. Had it not been for NIP's fantastic stage two, they wouldn't be sat where they are at the moment in the leaderboard. They'd be much lower down. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a rough stage, but at the end of the day, NIP, they've won SI. We know that they're capable of doing big things. The question is now, Demo, 
are they going to be able to? Because obviously when you have these rocky stages, it can have a big impact on the mental. And sometimes it gets to a point where even though you should be making all the correct decisions and making changes, you're just not able to. You're almost stuck in a rut. I hope they can get out of it because the game is getting underway. It's a final match of the evening. Ints versus NIP. Ollie Demo, take it away. Junks, thank you very much. Fourth game of the night. Getting ready to sling on into Oregon here. Int versus NIP. Not the most weighty game that we've had tonight, demo, and certainly not the most weighty game of the weekend, but a chance for NIP to semi redeem themselves, I guess. Because the stage that they have had up until this point has been a little bit less than ideal. Now, don't panic. Your stream hasn't frozen. We have just joined at a pause. The Observer, lightning fast, managed to pause on one second remaining. Quick, everyone panic. I mean, quick, think about who you're going to ban. True. This is free ban time. What were we what saying? Are they going to ban? For an Oregon. Um, Thatcher. It's a safe bet. Yeah. Uh, Valk. Another safe bet. Cade. Um, I don't know. That's always a trick. It depends who has the, the bigger Kahone sometimes, doesn't it? Depends who, who wants to, to play with a Kaido whenever Thatcher's banned, isn't it? Sorry. We are waiting for confirmation on this, by the way. I'm sure that we'll get some very soon, but mm -hmm. maybe headed into a remake of some description. Yep. Gone on for a little bit of time now. But we do know that Ints are going to be starting off on the defense. Exit's thoughts, safe bet. A any any expansion on that production? Or is it that is that is that just look, a it's just a random meme side. thrown up? Look on the bright side off of us currently paused right now, Ollie. It gives the viewers more time to get to know me and you. True. So Introdu Ollie, introduce yourself. I'm, well, I'm Demo, also known as Harry, even though nobody has ever called me that before, ever, period. And uh, I have two dogs. Um, two dogs? I have Never two dogs. I, I have two dogs, yeah, two dogs. And um, I, I I cast Siege. I, I enjoy that quite a bit. And and I hope that's all you need to know. Well, you've, you've upped me by one dog. <laughs> We have we have two dogs in the house, but I have mm -hmm. one dog. I'm only responsible yeah. for one. Mm -hmm. um, so you've, you've got me by one dog, which I'm pretty distraught about, to be honest. Might have to go um, and pick another, another one up tomorrow. Just go, to be a go get dogs. <laughs> Give a dog a home. It's almost Christmas. Dog isn't for Christmas. It's for life. Oh, I think I'd get murdered if I brought another dog into the house. Not, not be too well. Not be happy with the dogs. What do you think? Wait, how's your dogs with other dogs? Good, yeah, good. Pretty, pretty See, sound. one of my dogs, okay. One of my dogs is savage. Oh wow! Absolutely hates other dogs. So that's kind of where where I'm at with the dogs. Um, Bit of a risky one. Mhm, mm is indeed. I mean, Ollie, tell me about your perfect Sunday. Perfect Sunday. Uh huh. A little bit of Latam Phil, honestly. <laughs> Wait and see what's. Uh, that's true. Latam tomorrow, everyone. Don't forget. What's going on? Um, Latam is going to be on tomorrow. It is Super Weekend, mm -hmm. so we do have mm -hmm. all three... five matches tomorrow. Five matches as well, yeah. Every team plays tomorrow. We do. We uh, we catch up. Every team that's been lagging behind by one match here or there, mm -hmm. yep. we'll catch up tomorrow. We're getting to see the point of view of Ints at the moment. They look pretty jovial. They don't look too concerned about what's going on. Nope. Just vibing. Apparently, we've got a, a technical pause from NIP. Well, their PCs are having some issues, so mm -hmm. we're going to wait to get that resolved before unpausing we will at some point have to remake the lobby depending on how long this goes on for as the pause does only last for five minutes i believe until it automatically resumes and with our only being one second left i don't think that we'll get a chance to re-pause it again but we will see how that goes but for the meantime it's almost a shame that the pause has happened at this point because we could have talked about all of the other games until we're blue in the face but with how little rides on this one there isn't a great deal really to go off demo. There's not neither of these no. two teams are going to be not that they're going to be not worried about getting the result. Obviously the competitors they're going to want to win, 
but it isn't going to change all too much. There may be a bit of potential NIP to leapfrog Furia in the standings, but we do still have games tomorrow to be mm -hmm. played. And as you've already mentioned, every team plays everybody else tomorrow. So it's one of those situations where whilst there's not a lot riding on it in terms of qualification for Copa Elite 6, Copa do Brazil, relegation, we could see NIP leapfrog into that fourth place spot momentarily and depending on tomorrow's results retain that spot and of course maybe then that's going to give them a better more preferential seed as we look through toward the Copa League 6 because whilst mm -hmm. these teams are still locked in there's still a little bit to be decided there in terms of where in the competition they will enter yeah like I said before NIP this is where they can kind of prove everyone wrong uh, in a sense um I think NIP come in here today and they put up a good performance. I think it, it shuts up a couple of the haters, Ollie. And that's what it needs to do. You know, we need to silence some of the NIP critics because I think there's going to be a couple out there that are going, these guys just won invite. How is it that they're having so much trouble? Yeah, everyone starts screaming SSG effect, G2 effect, world champions yeah. go downhill, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I wouldn't say that it's... It hasn't... Remember, it hasn't been too long since Invitational. It hasn't been too long. It's still... It's... It's not to the extent where, oh, that's it done. It's only been a couple of weeks since they've had bad form. They still played really well in Split 2, didn't they? They won the last Copa Elite 6, didn't they? So I believe only, so, yeah. It's Off only really head, been yeah. since Mexico Major to this point yeah. right now that they've been on bad form. We've seen teams be in worse form and still get praise. We have. We have. There's just that level of expectation. Yeah. I think that that's the biggest problem, isn't it? There's that level of expectation and it's that level of sort of expecting consistency. And that's something that NIP have struggled with for a long time, honestly. They've really struggled with that, that level of consistency. But thankfully now we're back in the game. We thank you for bearing with us. Managed to get away with not having to remake the lobby either, which is always a bit of a bonus. So, we were right in some cases, Demo. No Valkyrie ban. We do have an Echo ban. Mm -hmm. We've got a Thatcher, a Ying, a Cade, and an Echo. It's going to be Ints, the ones that have braved the, uh, the old Cade ban with the Hibana still available. Yeah. That's also uh, another interesting theory. Um, I mean, in, in terms of... I've seen another Ying. What is it with, with Ying? Is everyone running Ying? I mean, we've seen Ying bans today. We've seen Ying being played today. What's up What's up with the Yings? Is this like a new, a new pick that teams have been... Been going for maybe in scrims and maybe teams are playing into that. Who knows? It certainly appeared out of nowhere, hasn't it? Yeah, it's almost like the Finker play. We, you know, this stage has seen so much Finker. I mean, Finker's got more apparent reasons for it's the just, upgrade. Yeah. In, it's in just pick, out of nowhere. It's you know, you, you've went to bed on the 24th of December, all of a sudden you've woke up and there's presents in your living room. You just, what's happened? He's your... been. Question, were your presents under the tree or on the sofas? On the sofa. Mine was on the sofas as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just proves that we, lazy parents <laughs> can't be bothered <laughs> to bend down and put it on the tree. bend down and put it on the tree. No, nope, on the sofa. Good. Right, let's see. Oregon defense is where we head first. Ints. They get to go first on the defensive half. Mira, no surprise to see Mira being brought. Um, very, very strong, can deny the laundry and freezer takes extremely well. I do like to see that right off the rip, we're seeing Flores be brought from NIP. We know how much damage Flores can do to Elbow. You send the Flores drone in, can explode the shield. You don't have to worry about going through the process of burning up Whamai's and ADS's. He makes the job extremely easily. And also with no mute being on the side of it, it's going to make that 10 times easier for them. And happy to start things off on the attack here. Muzi gathering a little bit of information, as is Psycho. Got to keep a keen eye on NIP here in this opening engagement. Mentioned there in the pregame that it's the stat line that they do too well in at the moment. Didn't start to get a sniff of that. They can give themselves a nice early advantage in the majority of the rounds. Like we may have a little bit of connection issue here. As Kamikaze just struggling with the old rubber band. Carry on regardless. We're going to be able to get in and start opening up into meeting. We're all going to be trying to gather a little bit of info there on the Twitch drone. Set up the flank cameras. Julio's positioning so far this stage has just been second to none. There are so many occasions 
Uh, he's been the player responsible for the round win, and he's come in with a very important handful of kills. Another player to really keep a keen eye on. Yeah, I was uh, quite surprised that, that Julie was actually the top-rated player uh, for NIP in terms of kills, especially whenever you have a Pino and you have a Muzi. Like, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm just very, very surprised that, that they're not up there. Um, looks as if that we have some technical difficulties, which it happens. Um, so you're back to, to me and Ollie again. Um, but really, from what we've seen, Ollie, not, not too much we can really dig into. It's mostly just the operator lineups and what NIP were setting out to do. It looks to be very standard, similar to what Liquid did earlier. Clear everything, give yourself a lot of options, and then kind of analyze to see where most of the utility is being set up. And in that scenario for Ints, we can see them very heavy with the laundry and freezer setup. Those double mirror windows, probably going to be a bit of an issue for NIP, I'm sure. Yeah, the mirror is really becoming quite popular downstairs on, on Oregon. And for good reason, like you say, the, the popularity of those windows and the, just the amount of information that you're able to gain off the back of them. We saw FaZe having a good time with and struggling a little bit against them as well in the couple of times they've played Oregon. So it's something that it's uh, it's always been a known. It's always been a thing that is uh, in the back of people's minds. Obviously, you think about old Oregon and laundry and mirror was a, a staple. You know, if mirror wasn't banned on Oregon, it was... GG in the rank games, you were winning that every single time. And it slowly but surely come full circle and it started to get introduced into uh, into competitive play as well. Looks as though we're going to bring Chunks back in. I think there's going to be uh, a little bit more of an elongated break here. It seems as though we're suffering with a little bit of power issue, which is never ideal. So we'll bring Chunks back into the conversation until we get a bit more further information as to exactly what's going on. Yeah, really exciting game so far, right, guys? <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're, we're having a couple technical issues between our feed and the feed that they send us from Brazil. So if anyone's wondering what's wrong with the delays, that's what's going on. We'll try and get that back up and running as soon as possible. I do have to ask, though, and, and it's going to sound so stupid, but we need to fill time somehow. Demo, is there any insight onto the play styles that we're maybe getting here from the operator lineup? Uh, a very safe lineup, I think, from both sides. Nothing really to have the ordinary nothing too crazy it's more kind of your typical org and what we're expecting so only time will tell how nip are going to attack that but I also have a question for you chunks because i need to know presence on the sofa presence under the tree under the tree always <gasps> under know? the tree under the tree he's 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 against the grain ollie Wow. Hey, what, what can I say? Anyway, look, let's 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 take a quick break for a moment because we're clearly losing our minds out here. We're going to go to a short break. We'll be back in just a couple minutes once we have an update on the technical situation. They told me this wouldn't be nothing Maybe I should take their advice Go get a life Or maybe get a job or something Pack it up and head back home Tell everybody I was bluffing or Maybe I'll just get out my head And focus on what I know's coming Yeah Cause I can't fall asleep at night Without seeing my dreams Delusion and reality I'm somewhere in between These voices in my head get loud And they keep telling me That I'm a fool for trusting in these wings My ex 
bitches is drinking themselves crazy tonight. <laughs> Baby, I should call and say, told you I'd be right. Wondering how long it was before you realized the biggest mistake of your life. And now you're paying the price. Oh, is it confidence or confusion? Either way, I feel like I ain't never losing. You're paying them now, you know just what I'm choosing. I gotta do this. Cause I can't fall asleep at night without seeing my dreams Delusion and reality, I'm somewhere in between These voices in my head get loud and they keep telling me That I'm a fool for trusting in these wings Well maybe baby this will fly for Rebel soul child got a fist ball. I'm a respawn of ancestors and I'm blessed, huh? They gon' knock him, tell him fess up. I get checked up, hella carefree, nothing scares me, hella reckless. Yeah, I got next up, right? No, we not the same, cause see when I look in your iris, you likely to talk and I'm ready to ride. You do better keeping it quiet. My pen is ignited, my soul is enlightened. I like who I am, but I'm biased. Their palate is right on my drip is a fountain. I'm not like these regular guys. All of that talk is misguided. She like the way I make the tape print, but the way I make the words play is grim. I'm the reaper reaching for the kill switch. The label cut the check like the blazeman. Something sparking where his brain is. The beat is somewhere where they prayer sent. Geronimo, the way I make the bass jump when a parachute is tasteless. Thank you for bearing with us during that short break. We are now back. Unfortunately, we did miss one round of action, but we are here to rejoin Ince. They did pick up round number one. The round continued to play as there was actually no problem with the game itself. It was just the feed that we were receiving from Brazil. There was a bit of a power issue inside of the studio. And as such, the game continued to go. But we lost our visual of it, but we rejoin. And what can we glean? Obviously, there has been a remake. Everyone's starting on zero kills, so that much is obvious initially. We don't know who popped off in the last round, but we do know that it was more than likely a laundry defense, as we did actually get to see the start of the round and just how it all played out. But back upstairs now, we're going up to kids' dorms, as Ints were successful in that opening round. Yeah, Ints taking the first round, which is, uh, I suppose... Probably the, the basement defense has worked out really well for them, I assume. NIP looked as if they had a good lineup. Very, very difficult, though, Ollie, to really judge, uh, considering that we, of course, didn't see the round. Because basement can really go yeah. any way. And Could have been a 1v1. We've seen, what, like a minute of, uh, of NIP, so we knew they were just kind of setting up and open up every single hatch and leaving their options open for nearly any push they wanted to go for. But we didn't know which one they went for, so... That stands 1-0 anyway. NIP, let's see if they can bounce back in round number two. They will be attacking onto the kids now, so it's going to be a different bomb site. Their lineup is, I mean, very, very standard in terms of what we expect to see for a top, uh, a top floor attack. 
You have your Habana to open up Bedroom. You have the Maverick, who is great at getting inside on Attic. You don't have to worry about any Mute Jammers. You can go straight on through it. It's of a bit of a more different lineup. We're seeing a Warden be brought in, and that's because NIP originally actually had a Glaz in their starting lineup until they went for the sixth pick. So that has also baited in Drunks to stick onto that Warden. But Warden, realistically, isn't going to get a lot of value. Most likely not. Obviously, with the Ying being banned as well, you really looking toward anything of that nature for uh, the Warden to be dealing with. Instead, it's going to be more flashes and things of that nature. And of course, positioning is crucial. It all depends on where Drunks decides to play. For how much value we actually get. We are seeing a bit of a two-pronged approach here from NIP. It's something we regularly ask for. Regularly scream for, especially in that Liquid game. Opening up the attic as well as pressuring in onto games. That looks to be happening now. We have got Kamikaze. He's been able to open up Mix Karos holes in through games there. So he's got a nice visual. Pressure coming in from attic as well. And now the drone work begins. We need to find out where these players are. Psycho. Flank drone now being placed. We can see there's going to be an outline there just inside a meeting. Player below is going to have a chance at a bit of a late flank here, Demo. Yeah, flank's definitely a possibility. But, Hintz, I mean, losing that first player. It is the Warden, so they don't lose too much value uh, in many circumstances. But still, that's an extra man that they would have liked. This is looking like a prime MIP round, Ollie, where they have everyone alive and they are set up in great positions to push in for that planet and just play off the refrags more than anything. The only thing you would be worried about is potential C4 from below, but Vitz doesn't have the C4. IP taking their time, putting up some pressure onto Psycho and Kid's window. And looking at Kamikaze here for the Diffuser. Another smoke will go out, and all Diffuser is going to be called for an Atau with a great swing. Vitz finds another, and all of a sudden, Ints are in the lead. I say that, that was Moosey picks up the Diffuser. He also gets taken out. Pino has had to make a last-ditch effort jumping in, but out of time for NIP. Ollie, that is not the NIP we expect to see whenever they're in those scenarios. Certainly not. If their recent performance is anything to go by and by recent, I mean last stage and particularly in and around Six Invitational, but it's very reminiscent of stage one NIP running out of time on the attack. It's always been something that has plagued them. And it's typically an area where they find a lot of issue. It's doing a really good job there to waste a lot of time, winning a couple of crucial gunfights, and then IP just leaving themselves too much to do. They had a great tick list. They got the they got the site open. They got open up into attic. They got opened up in from gate in from uh, closet into games, and they had all the lines of site open that they needed to. Hornetals played a blind there, not only finding that kill but also being able to waste a good portion of time. Last couple of seconds there. If, if Pino had had a little bit more time, we maybe see a couple of kills going in because it looks so ints were kind of stacking up there, one behind the other. Fortunately for them, time ran out again around the. Well, I don't know about it again. We don't really know what happened in round number one, but a round that could have gone either way. And, you know, you give NIP another 20 seconds there, maybe they make something happen. So NIP need to find a round. All of a sudden, Ints have a lot of momentum. Have momentum in Oregon. It is one of those maps, Ollie, where if things aren't going well on the attacking half, you blink and you're 6-0 down. It happens. It is a very volatile map, and if... Hints right now are firing on all cylinders and everyone is contributing to the rounds. And they have a very strong likelihood of being able to pull off something. You look at the scoreboard, Ollie. I mean, Psycho last round didn't really have an impact. And he is a player who we know can be that clutch master. I mean, really anyone from NIP can be that clutch master. And Psycho, uh, throughout the course of his career, has had so many uh, influential rounds for this team. But at the moment... Not really working for him yet to get a kill. Well, we don't know. We didn't really know how the last round went out. So maybe, maybe Psycho got four kills. We maybe. don't know. I think we're just going to call it as we see it from this point onwards. Speculation there as to what happened in one round. It's always difficult. NIP need to find some answers, though. Didn't get a clean sweep here three rounds. That 
doesn't bode too well at all. You're expected to at least be winning the offsides as an attacking team on Oregon, and there are opportunities to go a little bit further than that. Zach opening engagement on Topino. Couple of aids and a lot of information removed. Drunks still going to be rocking that warden pick, this time in the showers. Much better place to play the warden, a real specific use of those glasses to keep yourself alive and to keep yourself unflashed. Playing in off the back of a shield. Shower's control and Shower's corridor still firmly in the hands of Ince. And they're not looking to give that up any time soon. And IP really banging their heads against this at the minute. Just taking their time and that's a good start from Psycho. Eliminate Zack. It's going to be it's a one for one anyway inside of this round so far. A minute 15 still to go. If the Warden needs to back away now, he will get spotted out. VNX appears over kill one cycle. Two! Muzi also goes down. That's him swinging through shower corridor, Ollie. How does NIP let him get away with that? Two versus four. Kamikaze and Julio left to do it for their team. Kamikaze will try and use X Kairos to open up that main breach, but time is not really with them, Ollie. Player count clearly isn't with them. They don't have a lot that they can play off. Drunks is still alive, so if Julio tries to use the smoke grenades that he has in his back pocket, Warden's gonna be detrimental for NIP, but VNX appears again. This is where the shower corridor Ollie. It plays in so well to an aggressive lineup, and it's it just ran circles around NIP. Oh, tough stuff to watch there. NIP nowhere near in that round. They weren't even able to take showers control. It's fairly bread and butter stuff. You can't take it away from Ince. Ince have defended exceptionally well. They've only aggressed really at the last couple of moments there when they knew exactly where Kamikaze was and they had a really significant man count advantage. It's four versus one. You're going to be fairly happy to throw a body or two at that usually as you can get a crossfire in, especially with the angles that Kamikaze had opened up. But a serious showing from Ince in the opening three rounds. Now we get to go back downstairs and we can actually see what they had planned for this hold. Now, I think there's been a little bit of an operator change. It was a bit of time ago, and we've had a tech pause in between. But, off the top of my head, mirrors were being played previously by Ince. And this time, we saw that six pick out of, and a smoke has been chosen instead by Drunk. Maybe the mirrors weren't as crucial as they would have liked. The smoke certainly does the damage. We know how powerful smoke can be. So much, though, that Team 1 have taken to banning it out on this map pretty much every time we've seen them play it recently. So I am intrigued to see how this basement's going to play out. It looks as if we have some slight changes from the lineup that was originally locked in inside of the first round. And um, Mira is gone. We're seeing Ella be brought to the table. NIP are not interested in Flores anymore. So there is some, some slight adjustments from either side. Don't know which one uh, pays off better in this scenario. I mean... Giving up the mirror, I suppose, would make sense if you know that Julio is on that Twitch. Twitch is one of the strongest counters to a mirror window now these days. You sneak a Twitch thrown in. It, of course, all it can jump now, so it has more uh, movement. And also, the uh, the actual laser is an infinite range, so you can snipe that from any distance. Yes, and classification-wise, it's changed from a shock to a laser or there's some sort of different terminology there that was used. But yeah, for all intents and purposes, it is an infinite line of damage and it will deal damage to a, a bullet, uh, sorry, a, a default camera or you know, ADS, whatever it might be. And of course, the gas canister behind a mirror window. Slow stuff from NIP, which is and to be expected, honestly. And it's almost strange because it's not as though Ints are giving them the runaround upstairs. Ints aren't even playing aggressively on these freezer stairs. You can see Pino, he's got his drone down in there now and he can see, yep, everything looks fairly normal. There's no echo drone on the ceiling. You can move through, figure out if there's anyone behind box. Yep, ADS and someone playing behind box. Quick look on the ceiling, still nothing up there to worry about. Okay, so we know that we can potentially... Get a, a short nade in to maybe deal a bit of damage if he's pushed up. If not, we need to burn the ADS and push down. There's no initial resistance here on the stairs. Nothing stopping NIP from going on down. It's still taking them nearly two minutes to get into position. Yeah, that's eating a lot of time for them. And 
Ten IP. Is this where we're starting to see the old NIP Ollie where it was always you're too slow, they're too slow. And right now it looks as if that old NIP is kind of coming back out of its shell. But we don't want to see that NIP. We want to see the NIP we seen at Invitational who, whenever they had information, they played off it so aggressively. They had Pino and Muzi firing and all cylinders. But at the moment it's not looking good for them. Those toxic days will slow them down even more so. It's not exactly where NIP are coming from. It's a laundry freezer. Anyone can see that. It is clear as day. And all Ints really need to do is just hold on to the best of their abilities. It's going to be a very difficult execute for NIP. 25 seconds to go. No nades on the board. They do have two smokes. Julio has to make them count. Michael and Pino are going to push on through and get cut down in the cross. Hornetau and VNX holding angles. Uzi, is it going to be an impactless kill for now? At least, yes. Hornetau in position to shut him down. Kamikaze trying to push through laundry. Seven seconds left. Julio on the back stairs. These two couldn't be further away from one another. Hornetau with the swing. Julio lets out his frustration there with the F2 onto the steps. There's another unsuccessful attacking round for NIP. NIP tried to sit down Ollie and Ince came right behind them and pulled the chair before they had a chance. Very impressive from Ince. They held the crossfire as well. I have to then look at the utility from NIP. In the final 20 seconds, Ollie, did you see that deployable shield still alive looking into freezer and laundry? Yeah. How is that how is that up? It's odd because NIP have never done anything other than a freezer take. Attacking downstairs, that is all NIP do. And still, we see things not being ticked off the list. Like it's 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 so frustrating to watch. It is their their main way of attacking into the laundry, and they consistently fall at that freezer take. I don't know what it is about why they like to push it so much, but that freezer push from NIP is is literally as old as time. It's since the rework of this map itself. That is the only way that they like to choose an approach. You know, some teams, they'll mix it up. They'll go for bunker. They'll go for backstairs. They'll go for laundry. They'll go for a hatch drop. It might be every single time it's through the freezer. And Ints have just set up perfectly for it. It's, too, it's almost too predictable. This kids is where we move on to now. See how this top floor works for them. The lineup again, a bit of a change for NIP. Flores makes another appearance back into the lineup, but... Ollie, they, they haven't brought the Maverick this time, only going with the Habana. Granted, there's no mute on the side of Ints this time, so if they do want to go Attic, that is uh, a viable strategy. They can open that if they want to. But realistically, if you're bringing Habana, you're not really also going to go over and open Attic. It just takes a lot of time. Um, you're either going to go all in an Attic, or you're going to try and open up Bedroom. More than likely, Bedroom is going to be the option that NIP will try and take control of. NIP just really couldn't get their heads screwed on and execute onto this site properly. Ints were in strong positions. I think Attic was really um, just ignored by NIP and it let them down massively. If if the enemy side still has active control, you cannot push in to generate or push in towards the master bedroom breach as freely as what you normally would if you had active control. Something that we praised an IP for previously when they attacked this site was their ability to actually go for both of the of the key walls. You know, they were able to get open into generator and they were able to get open also into uh, attic. This time, we're only seeing one hard breach be brought. The attic push wasn't successful for them. Julio was trying to make the Maverick work over there. And they had the pressure, but they just didn't really get enough time to be able to affect it. Now they're going for a much more direct approach. Pino? Tries to nade out above and seemingly panic throws his second. Not ideal. Muzi's going to be hanging around at the bottom of white as well. There's still a downstairs presence here from Ince. Psycho trying to push through and remove a little bit of utility here. He's gathering a ton of information and that shield is going to be on his list. Gets rid of the shield. He went past a couple of other bits and bobs which we'll be able to call out on the way and maybe send another drone in for. Already two minutes gone for NIP. They try their best now to see if they can capitalize some of the openings that they have. Kamikaze runs in deep and is now in the perfect position to go for a plant. Anyone below though lurking with a C4 doesn't seem to be the case, but Ints have appeared with two kills. 
Seems to be two players now stuck on white. One goes down. Julio swinging in towards Trophy. Finds Vitz in a 2v2. This is sketchy though from NIP. Not in the greatest positions. Diffuser is cold on the ground. Pino makes a dive. Eliminates one. And now it's Julio up against VNX. Julio on a sliver of HP. Will secure the Diffuser now. Where is he going to go? Has the LNG in hand? Can he land the shot? No, he cannot. VNX taps away. Julio goes down. And it's 5-0. They lead. My oh my. NIP in the mud. Firmly stuck in the mud as well. Ints coming out there and just superior in every single one of those gunfights that they were able to take. The crossfires that Ints had generated. It was looking really good for a time for NIP. They had a couple of things going for them. But it just wasn't enough in the end. Ints, they ran a little bit too deep there. It was going well for NIP at the start of the push. They were able to get a couple of early kills. But all of a sudden, things just start to fall apart. Julio manages to win that engagement, which was very crucial. Pino pushing up at the top of white. He just walked himself into a crossfire. It was, it was hard to watch, to be honest with you. No pressure on Big Window. The big takeaway from that is that there is nobody on Big Window from NIP. Nobody stopping players from making rotations in and around the bunks area. In and around the kids' dorms area. You get a little bit of that going on, and all of a sudden, Ince, they've not got as much room to breathe. Now, NIP are staring down the barrel of an absolute... They're just getting demolished. They're yep. staring down the barrel of six rounds in a row going against them here. Now, sure, it's Oregon. Sure, it's defense. But from the attack, they've got opportunity here. They're just not playing very well. Ince did fantastically last time we saw them defend down here. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could say they're getting they're getting demolished. You could say they're they're getting dam demoed. Ollie. And demoed. What do you think it demoed? Is that is that word? We could, we could use it, yeah. Yep. Unfortunate for NIP. Just some players have not turned up to the mark right now. Ints have been everywhere. VNX have been very impressed with some of his rotations, Ollie, that he's been hitting and it has paid off big for him. NIP, where do you go? Last time you attacked this bomb site, it was it wasn't close. They they lost players by one guy simply walking down Showers Corridor. I mean that is you know basic Oregon knowledge 101. If you're attacking, oh just, <laughs> I mean if if you want confidence, that is that's how it's described right there. What a peak from Zach, and it's paid off massively. Pino, the only one who's really got kills for NIP is gone. We'll start on a couple of nades as well. Especially when you're trying to deal with a player inside of showers. You need all the projectiles that you can to remove the shields and to start pressuring that location. Drunks has been forced back a little bit. I'm not going to be too concerned for the meantime. He does have the window to contend with as well. He's playing in a bit of an off angle at the minute. And unless somebody gets on the window, it's pretty safe. Vitz is going to find himself downed as well. But Zach continuing picks up his second on the round he's getting naded out and he's pushed out of position but it isn't going to matter he's still been able to cause a ton of damage now removing kamikaze that's any ability to open up any of these reinforced walls gone now granted there are a couple of lines of sight over into showers but it's not a great deal to go off muzi's now trying to push on down as he looks to aggress on through psycho can open up so that transition can be made between showers and small office and a messy gunfight will ensue drunks takes down muzi julio has a chance and capitalizes two players down now but what about that for a turnaround drunks how does he sit him down on? the nade from psycho finishes two players off vitz still down for the count an equal two versus two now zach and hornetow both looking to hold on both playing the bottom of white stairs psycho he knows at least where one player is, and Julio's going to rotate round to assist. 30 seconds left. Time enough to get that diffuser down, but they still need to get themselves into the site here. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one for NIP. One has to try and plant an all-pressure and cycle to cover. Zach will now make a move, trying to push in from security. Hornetown waiting for him, and now they're both going to try and double push. Psycho finds one. Can he find the second? Diffuser goes down. Zach eliminates the planter. And now it's down to one versus one. Diffuser will be planted. Zach's going to swing. He sees the sledge, but cannot hit the shots. Sledge backs away. Still top fire and takes more damage, and Psycho wins that to at least get NIP one round. 
My oh my. Don't know how they pulled off that one. I really have no idea. Ents were just in their face 24-7. But NIP, never, never count your chickens with NIP. Whew. I feel like we need to see that from like every conceivable angle. Like every player's POV and the top-down view. And only then we might get an idea need to of get the just VAR what up. happened. Oh, it's a full VAR. This is this is a big 10-minute in steward's inquiry. That nade from Psycho. I want to know where that went to because it picked off two players, which was really big. He's had a big round overall. We might get to glean a bit of info here. Great early peak from Zach. Loads of regression, loads of confidence. That turn from Drunks was fantastic, but he paid for it straight away. The nade flew through. Psycho was able to clutch up. I think he got four kills inside of that round and, of course, assisted the plant in going down. It's a round that NIP needed, and it might be a small consolation for what is about to happen. Int five rounds to one here that was a hell of a show in there for their defensive half they now need to continue it only two rounds away from locking up the game but two rounds against nip and now the tides have turned it might just get a little bit more difficult for them i feel like they need to come out of the gate swinging here they can't let that last round knock them off balance nip Let's see how they will pull this back. If they can pull it back, that's the question. Ints looking raring to go. Look at their lineup, Bolly. Got a good mix. They have double hard destruction, which is good to see. Maybe something that NIP didn't acknowledge. They have the Finca and also the Yana. This has been a, uh, quite a common combination we've seen tonight, Ollie. We've seen a lot of teams running both of them. Nades are so powerful, and the Finca is just a great choice that stim boost the confidence the nades everything that thinker brings of course the gone six it's all things that the big ticks in the in the box of an attacker and a, and a box of like what you want to have i'll have to see if it proves worth here for ints zach's had a pop-off so far especially considering he's brought in as a fragger and there's sometimes been a question mark over his performance six and four in the rounds that we've seen Will Ints go for the same NIP style push and just focus entirely on that freezer stairs? I would wager not, given that there's mirror windows facing that way. You need to come up with an alternate route, and maybe that's going to be in through the laundry. At least VNX is going to give it an op give it as an option for later on. That hatch will now be open. So Ints begin their preparation. And I paint no roam game from them. Of course, with the mirror windows, do you really need to roam? You already have a powerful mechanic to try and hold off anyone pushing laundry and freezer. Uh, interesting from NIP, they fully reinforced that single wall uh, by the stockroom. So holding onto those uh, tower stairs makes this a little bit more difficult and actually, I think, would uh, would actually improve the favor of Ince rotating around and trying to push in towards blue because it just gives that tower stairs guy just more freedom. I already hear smoke canisters going off as the hatch drop has been smoked by the attacker's Hornetow peeking through. Going to be able to remove the Banshee there. Three drones left. It's not that many in the grand scheme of things. Hornetow aggressively pushes on in. Vitz to find the opener. Takes down Kamikaze. Drunks a second. It's all falling apart here for NIP. The push initially has been successful. Zach is going to be down for the count though. 45 seconds left. Still time to potentially get him up and still a long time here for the two remaining players for NIP to hold on. What a shot! Pino sits Vitz down and does something to level out this man count. Muzi with the swing. He's going to take down Hornetow. It's one versus one. VNX, he's managed to get Zach up. Now it's two versus one. Quick finger stim and he's back up to just below half. Muzi makes the rotation. 18 seconds left. Diffuser in VNX's hands. Needs to ideally try to get it down. Zach gives himself away. He's caught flat-footed. Ints, they've got no idea where Muzi is. At least they didn't. Now they do. Muzi looking to move through the rotation. VNX, is he going to be able to get this pre-fire right? He needs to predict. Muzi with the pre-fire sits him down. A massive clutch here for NIP. Muzi steps up to the plate. Phenomenal for Muzi. Weaving in and out. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee for Muzi. Ints, how's that happen then? 
An easy round that really should have been capitalized on. But NIP has somehow pulled that away. Ollie, it just shows the just the backbone of that team. Even whenever they're in situations that they shouldn't clutch, they still do. The clutch factor. What makes a good team a great team. And they have that clutch factor. Every single one of NIP possess it. There it was displayed beautifully. You've got to feel a little bit bad for Ince. Just getting caught chasing the tail a little bit. It was a bold initial push. And they went up quite significantly early on. But I just don't think that they had all the information that they needed. They really didn't know where Muzi was. Zach got caught out. For all that Zach got revived, it really didn't matter. Because Zach just gets caught looking entirely the wrong way. Maybe a little bit more focus on getting the plant down there. Could have done Ince a few more favours, but... We move on. We move upstairs. Now, last time that I saw NIP on this map, I think I was casting with Geo. And NIP only ever went two sites on the defense demo. They literally went downstairs to laundry and upstairs to storms. That was it. And that also tells you that they didn't have a very successful defensive phase because they were able to just go from one site to another. It was a little bit strange. So don't be surprised if in round nine, if an IP win here, we don't see them go to a third site. I will be surprised mm -hmm. if they go to, they'll go to meet and if they win, if they lose, I won't be surprised to see them just go straight back downstairs as soon as they can. Because they weren't up for that rotation. They just wanted to play two sides. It was very odd. Yeah. I think the main thing for Ince is don't give NIP momentum. NIP have just, just taken the last two rounds and we know what NIP can do. NIP could easily go in here now and 7-5. I, I can definitely see that happen. We've seen it happen before. You don't give NIP that snowball because as soon as that little snowball starts to pick up speed, not a single thing you can do can stop that. And that's just the way NIP are. That's the kind of team that they have. I thought Ince did amazingly well to shut down that momentum early on. That's probably why they went 5 up. So this is quite a poor round for Ince. They really need to shut down the momentum that NIP have gained and and almost put NIP, you know, 6-2 down and then NIP might think, oh, well, well, that's it. You know, how are we going to pull back this now? And it almost gets into their head as soon as you win this next round. I don't think Ince are going to be feeling too down on the look just yet. It's anticipated that you're going to struggle downstairs in the basement attacking. For as close as it was. Just something that needs to be brushed off and dealt with another time. Yeah, next is gathering quite a bit of info here. There's a lot of offside players for an IP. Plenty of people inside of the kitchen all trying to play with C4s. Psycho. Gonna be down there with said C4. Great early pick from Drunks. He manages to take down Pino. Doesn't even need to commit his drone in. He's able to get that info from the outside, save it from the mozzie pest, and remove Pino from action. Gonna be a nice early pick, given the context of this slow round that we're seeing develop here. Julio is gonna get lit as he's taken out inside of classroom and chipped on down. VNX, excuse me, the plant is going down. Who is allowing this? NIP, what are you doing? The plant goes down for free demo. How has this happened from NIP? And now this is gonna be a difficult retake. Double window is still in control of Ints, and you can see they're flooding more players towards that side of the map to lock it down even more so. Horn of Tau, he's almost sitting in the default flat position, picks up an absolute freebie. Drunk's even rotating over towards bedroom balcony. That's a great rotate because that shuts down anyone wanting to cross over towards Trophy. And I'm sure NIP will really line up and that's where they can absolutely slaughter them. Drunk's with another NIP have been demolished on this bomb site. No chance to get the diffuser down. Horn of Tau picks up his freebies and Giulio, he seems to be downstairs for an eternity. Ollie. Hasn't worked for him. It's 6 2. Strange to see the plant going down so freely there. NIP were so focused on denying the plant vertically that they just forgot that the early part of the round, big air quotes by the way, because there was less than a minute left, early part of the round for NIP was still available and it was a time that you could plant in. It didn't seem like a, a conceivable possibility that anybody would plant before the 20 second mark, but. Ince did just exactly that, and they were successful in holding it. The site was light, there were no defenders up there, and the defenders that were there were very easily cut off and taken care of. 
Ints, match point. Long, long way for NIP to climb. They need four rounds in a row. Back to back to back. If they're going to try and make something happen here. They are going to go back upstairs. They're not going to change too much about the lineup. Do you worry about NIP? So, this is it. NIP. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Back upstairs again. I'd be surprised, Ollie, if the same old trick works again. I think yep. NIP will be ready for it. You can see Julio. He's off the impact. He's on the C4. Triple C4 with Valkyrie cameras. Realistically, nobody should be planting. I feel like that's what they were trying to go for last time. And maybe Julio didn't realize he had the impact. So maybe he was going to try and deny the wall from being opened in Classroom. Because that's where he was kind of caught out a little bit. But instead, it's it's gone the other way, hasn't it? It's gone sort of full denial, right? If Inter are going to look to try and get the plant down, we're going to try and deny it. So let's see now where NIP are going to start with their defense. What's going to be the plan? This is the fence. They're going to try and burn up some flashbangs. They know that they're trying to hold in towards Trophy quite heavily. A nade also being tossed in. Does that, does that get anything? Nope, doesn't seem to be the case, so... Bit of a weird approach from Insel. I've never really seen somebody try and deny access to a player inside a trophy from using that, that single window by Armory. That, that's a bit of a surprise. I see, niche. Uh, yeah, it is. We'll, we'll see if if they can actually take control of trophy, because realistically, Ollie, that's wasted utility that they've got nothing from. These mozzie pests are proving quite a problem to deal with. We saw them struggling last round with them as well, and Zach's going to be battling with one yet again. Opening engagement goes in favour of Ince. Drunks takes down Julio. We write a passage now to open up into Attic. Of course, VNX on the other side of things. Probably going to start opening up into uh, into games, excuse me, as well. Going to make things even more difficult. And it's all happening at around a decent time here. Ints aren't doing too bad for it. They've actually got quite a lot now. They can look to further drone out and figure out where these guys are going to be coming from. NIP lost that first man and now Ints really in a good position. See if they can capitalize on that. So they have pressure on Attic, which is one of the main things that I feel NIP really struggled on, Ollie, on their attacks, was they didn't apply pressure to, uh, apply pressure to the Attic, and really, Ents just had free range. Bit of a slip there from Zach. I don't think he knew there was a Renegade on that door, and he just walks into it, and you always see he was stunned whenever that happens, so he takes a bit of damage, but nothing, nothing too crazy. A smoke will be tossed out. Maybe that's to try and bait a C4, potentially. Let me try and attract the eyes from a player of NIP, but not at the moment. 20 seconds to go. Drunks will eliminate Attic Ollie, and all of a sudden, Ints, they are now in a great position. Kamikaze and Psycho with the fight back, though. They're able to shut down that pressure, but the repel is going to be too much. Muzi, when have we seen him in the clutch? Multiple times, but this time, he cannot pull it off. Ints, they're going to lock up the game. They're going to take a full three points away from NIP here in what was a staggering result for them. 7-2 here on Oregon. Cracking game from Ince. NIP tried their best to get back into the game, but, I mean, Ollie, 5-0 down. Ince played out of their skin in their defensive half, and again, a very well-deserved victory. We know there's not really much riding on it. There's not much weight in this match, but what do we say about NIP? What has happened to them? They really are a shell of the former self at the moment, and you can only hope that they're holding things back in anticipation for Copa League 6 to try and guarantee themselves the uh, the November Major and to, and to look a little bit further forward. But certainly today, you can't take anything away from Ince. They are the most deserved team. They played out of their minds, played to the whistle, and they played the game of Siege that was in front of them, which was very impressive. We weren't sure what to expect out of this one. We weren't sure if it was going to be 
quick one, a long one, one where neither team really took advantage. But very early on, it was apparent that Inter had come with one thing on their mind, despite the point in, despite their position in the leaderboard, and despite the fact that this game didn't have too much weight on it. They've come out here and they've put in a great performance. They've played right, really hard right up until the bitter end, and they thoroughly deserve the win. Yeah, NIP just kind of rolled over. I mean, Ints, I think they were getting away with murder. Some mm. of the stuff that they were pulling, you look at the uh, the round where they were defending uh, their kitchen and dining. VNX just walked up Shower Corridor and got, what, four kills, three kills that round, whatever it was. Like, that shouldn't happen, but it did. And Ints were getting away with too many things, and NIP just didn't respect. NIP let them get away with it, and NIP, I think, came into that game and it looked from right from the get-go they were shaky and they didn't really know where they wanted to go yeah i think that confidence has been an issue pretty much throughout this stage for them but we'll maybe get to speak to julio about it tomorrow as they do have one last chance to get a win before we close out stage three we're gonna bring chunks back in here and we are gonna wrap up today and let everyone know exactly what's gonna be going on tomorrow because there is still a lot to play for yep Still five games left in the BR6 Super Weekend, and it's going to be an exciting one, but Demo, it felt like that was the game that we knew it was a possibility we could get a result like that, mm -hmm. but I don't think anyone expected it. I don't think in that fashion. I think a win definitely yeah. could have could have happened. Uh, I think we kind of alluded to that NIP. They're there. You know, free wins, it seems to be that they're handing out at the moment, but a 5-0 stomp right off the get-go is probably something that we didn't expect. Um, NIP, again, tried to come back into it, but it was too much of an ask. It really was. I mean, I would say if that was the NIP of a couple of months ago, probably would have been a 7-2. The NIP would have been the reverse flip. Well, it's a rough one there, unfortunately, for NIP, but it shows that they abso that Int absolutely did their research coming into it. One man who did a lot of research there is going to be Hellraiser, the analyst for Ints. We have him here for an interview. Hellraiser, how was that for you? Oh, it's great. It's great to win against the uh, NIP. Yeah, against a squad like NIP as well. It's got to be a big confidence boost. Obviously, it doesn't affect the stand-ins too much. It's a little bit too late to have the chance of going to the Elite Six, but... Going into the Copa do Brazil, how are you feeling about it? Are you feeling confident after that win? Oh, we're feeling comfortably, and I think we're feeling more comfortable. Uh, I think we we want to win more than more games. Oh, yeah, my English a bit. That's, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's it's absolutely <laughs> fair. I do want to ask, how do you go about preparing to get into a game like this? up against a team like NIP? Is it just like any other game? Or do you have to change things against those top level teams? Oh, we need to change, to change things, but they don't change m much from the last game. The last Argon they play. Yeah, well, you definitely read them well. Hellraiser, I know it's been a long day, so we'll let you get off and go and celebrate with the rest of your team. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Thank you, guys.